Let me just say this. There's a lot of crazy things happening in this world and sometimes you can you can feel like there's no way out and it's depressing sometimes but see you got to remember that God is in control of everything He's in control of everything You see John 3.16 says For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son That whosoever believeth in Him Shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you see how deep that is and how much God loves you? He doesn't want to see anybody go to hell, but He loves you so much that He gave you the choice. And at the same time, He gave you the free gift of salvation. And all you got to do is choose. All you gotta do is choose Jesus. It's a free gift, a free gift of salvation. All you gotta do is choose His Son. You see, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Believe in Him. Cause his life he gave Jesus He paid the ultimate price for your sins My sins and the whole world's sins I mean like He gave his life for you Jesus gave his life for you Died on the cross for your sins, and I don't deserve this gift. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's me, Ninja Scroll, and you are listening to I Am Awake, the I Am Awake show, right here on I Am Awake Radio. That's right. Uh, man, a little different week for me because my work days got switched up because of the holidays and so uh, I wasn't able to have a show ready for you guys, um, you know, early, earlier, um, it's late now, it's, uh, you know, almost 12 midnight here in South Jersey, and you know normally I have my shoes up and running uh, you know one time you know what I'm saying but uh, normally they're up and running by Friday 1pm but like I said I had to actually work today so I was unable to do I could have I could have did a show I recorded it on um, Thursday night, but I had to work Friday morning, and I'm like, uh, you know, and then, you know, stuck going around the house talking on the phone with my girl, fiance, wife, whatever you want to call her. I call her, it's my wife, you know. We're we going to be married in March when I move there to Montana. We'll be getting married. So, um, I mean, that's already, that's already planned and in the works, and things are already, you know, working with that right now is we're basically just uh, waiting for me to get there and you know I sign the papers and, and it's done and I'm happy I'm very happy you know and um, we're, we're gonna we're planning on doing like a little ceremony I, I don't know you know 
We're not into the whole wedding pagan type thing, but we'll do something, you know, invite family and close friends and, uh, you know, a little get together, a little just announcement of our love for each other to the world. <laughs> nah. Oh, man, I, I just wanted to come on tonight because, you know, normally I do shows every Friday. At one a Friday, uh, a show will be up and available every Friday at 1 p.m. And I was not able to do it. But I wanted to come on because I think a lot of times m my shows in particular, I, um, I, I focus a lot on the snake bite and them trying to force us to get the snake bite and, uh, You know, just the things that's going on in the world in general, and and I've been saying a lot that I need to start get refocused, and mainly what I want to get refocused on is winning souls for Jesus Christ, because I think that the enemy can use these things that's going on in the world to distract us from our main goal, and our main goal as believers on this earth especially especially this time in these times we should be out there doing his work it's fine for us to expose evil which and expose you know bring the light to things that they're doing which is cool you know what i mean because at the, you know we can still use those things to to bring people to, to christ we can we can do that still you know so um It, there's definitely a good tool to use uh, but at the same time I don't sometimes I think that we get consumed with this stuff you know we just get consumed and wrapped up in trying to be right and trying to show people what's right and we and we forget what our main objective is sometimes I think and yeah, like I said, you know, it's good to expose stuff. But our main objective is to win souls for Jesus Christ. Win souls for the Lord. And me, myself, I think I'm going to, I'm going to start getting back to that. So we'll talk a little, little bit about everything. You guys know how I operate on this network here. On my network here, I don't, do, I don't script my stuff. I just um, come out here and talk. I get stuff off my chest. Sometimes I do a lot of venting. I get on my soapbox and I talk. And then sometimes I'll, I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just come on. We'll just talk to each other. You know, you guys can hit me up in comments and respond. We can respond. I can say something here and you guys can hit me up in the comments. And I can respond back that way, you know, because uh, I don't know how to do the setup with the calling thing eventually. Maybe I can figure out how. Uh, first of all, I have to go live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, like right now, I'm doing just uh, pre-recorded stuff. I mean, I can pre-record if I wanted to have a guest like I did in, in, in past shows with Joshua. My man Joshua and uh, and and uh, my man uh, Axel Rose. <laughs> my man Axel Rose is a trip. You know, I had them cats on there, and we just pre-recorded it, you know, one on Skype, and pre-recorded the show, and then I uploaded it on YouTube, so, I mean, it's not like on Blog Talk. When I was on Blog Talk Radio, we had call-in phone numbers, and we had, like, a little studio-type uh, setup, where uh, it was, like, line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, you know, all the way down the line, and people could call in, and I could see... If they wanted to just listen online, listen on the phone, or if they wanted to actually talk to me. So, like, if you wanted to just listen on the phone, you would call in, and they were, and a recording would say, you know, um, if you want to join the, if you want to speak to the host, press one. If not, just sit here. And, you know, if, if you don't want to speak to the host, just sit there, and you can just listen to Blog Talk Radio over your phone. But if you want to speak to the host, you would press one and a little light would like a little hand would pop up, a little light hand, or yellow hand, whatever would pop up. And it would alert me and let me know that you wanted to talk. And then uh, you know, I bring you on 
a lot of times we would have screeners that would see your hand pop up and the screener would go on and talk to you off the air make sure you're not a troll you know what i'm saying and then if you was cool they bring you on and then we we wrap the face <laughs> you know what i'm saying and uh that I, that's why I, I like that format i wish we had i wish youtube had something similar like that connected to it where you can have call-ins on shows i think that would be really banging if they could do something like that it'd be really good and i know some shows some uh what do you call it some um channels here have figured out ways to do it and i just maybe i just need to do it but in order for me to do that basically i i have to go live and I don't go live much because there's a lot of stuff going on around in the house. And if I go live, it's going to be like this time of night. And how much, how many of y'all going to be up? Unless y'all live on the West Coast. Not too many of y'all going to be up. So, uh, I don't know. It's whatever. But, thank you guys for checking this out right now. Um, we got, um, like I said, I'm going to, this show, I'm going to just get into whatever I can get into. It might end up being about snake bites. <laughs> it might end up being about snake bites. And and the six foot killers. And it might not. It might have a mixture of snake bite, six foot killer, and Bible stuff. But we're gonna get into something, you know what I'm saying? But before we uh get moving, let me um let me let me let's play some music. Well, you know, ease into the show. And um, you know, we'll go from there. So you're listening to the I Am Awake show right here on I Am Awake Radio. I'm going to scroll. We'll be right back right after this. And all of the trial that I've been through I feel like I don't know what to do Many mistakes in life, quite a few It only just strengthens my faith in you Here is see that lives in you That he that is in the world hey. He'll never leave or forsake you In his eyes you're a special prayer You're a special prayer Fix your eyes on him alone And your head up to the sky Head up to the sky But I thank the Lord for the air I breathe He's taking me up every time I grieve Ask of the Lord and you shall receive And even when life does get you down You better believe that God's around I once was lost but now I'm found He put my feet on solid ground
as you pray. I know that the Lord's been there for me Without Him I don't know where I'll be He opened my eyes so I can see And all the trials that I've been through I feel like I don't know what to do Many mistakes in life, quite a few It only strengthens my faith in you For the crimes they committed Selling baby parts for profit On tape they did admit it I don't get it You claim it's not a life growing inside Even though it has a heartbeat Ears, nose, feet and eyes And X and Y chromosomes Tell us if boy or girl Not a life down here on earth But it will be doing up the world Use terms like abortion And fetus but it's crazy Cause abortion equals murder And fetus equals baby The reason why you use these words So you feel no remorse And leave behind your guilty conscience Go about your course yeah. Yes, I am a human. Listen to my heartbeat. God made me just like you do. Was right. Do was right. Everybody else. I deserve to live my life.
just one way. What what about Jesus? What about Jesus? There isn't only one way. There is one way and only one way, and that, that is through Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million people Because you say there, there isn't. There couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If you no. don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. Ooh. Hey. Hey. To a God that don't hear what you say No absolute game is what you play Living a lie, your whole world is gray Finding the end that your soul will not push You could be politically correct and all that mess Tolerate till the very last day You're gonna find you've been led astray Either believe in Jesus Yo, Christ then we People wanna live way. with no absolutes The sin is used to sin Do what you want is the way you're living Can't pray to Muhammad to us since we're giving Won't help cause he's dead and he can't listen And Buddha's just a statue, no blood in his veins You can chant all you want but he can't hear his name Any other false god, yo, it's just the same It's a shame Satan got you caught up in this game Simple and plain, there's only one way That's just truth, you don't have to be a sleuth You can learn as a youth can't be many ways to God, there's one true And there's only one true God and He made you He's the God of the Bible, I hope you get the gist of this Salvation, I hope you don't miss Some of you might get real mad and pump fists But there's only one way to God and that's it Thank you a God that don't hear what you say hey. No absolute game is what you play oh, yeah. Living a lie, your whole world is gray Finding the end that your soul will push hey. You can be politically correct and all that mess Tolerate till the very last day You're gonna find you've been led astray You can believe in Jesus yeah. Christ And so some of your cats way. don't wanna believe Been deceived by the God of this world Born down in your knees Worshipping trees and elephants Praying to the stars Putting faith in the zodiac signs and mars But there's only one real way And he is the truth You don't have to believe You heard no excuse You can call me all kinds of names And throw sticks But it's written right there in John 14, 6 no no tricks, no gimmicks, and the gift is free Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for you and me Put thorns on his head, shed blood for our sins Conquer death, rose again, eternal life begin And we win in the end, Satan falls and fails And the true God, Lord Jesus Christ prevails I'd be remiss if I didn't backtrack and say There were many false paths, but there's only one way To a God that don't hear what you say No absolute in what you play Living a lie, your whole world is gray Finding the end that your soul will catch hey. You could be politically correct and all that mess Tolerate hey. till the very last day You're gonna find you've been led astray hey. You could believe in Jesus Christ There is just Men one statues, way. rosary beads and long chants Of repetitive prayer, sun god and moon dance Got you in a trance, new age down with dog stance Channeling the send the as soon as you can Send the prayers to the sixth arm God of destruction, all pray to the same God Satan's corruption cause the God of the Bible is alive and well And the others are nothing but demons that dwell Here on earth looking for someone that they can possess Cause stress in your life, emptiness and depression But at best give you fortune and fame For your soul contract with the devil Now he's in control If there's more than one way we should all get in Feel free to live life, no remorse for sin Jesus Christ is the way, truth and life I must say, don't delay, follow nothing but truth He's the way You a God that don't hear what you say No absolute in what you play Living a lie, your whole world is gray Finding the end that your soul will pay You can be politically correct and all that mess Tolerate till the very last day You're gonna find you've been led astray Either believe in Jesus Christ There was just one way Find you've been led astray. Need to believe in Jesus Christ. There was just one way. Oh, yo, yo, what's going on, player man? What's up, man? Remember, I seen you like a year or so, man. Remember, we was talking on the street over there, man. Yeah, man, what's going on, player? What's oh, up, man? yeah, I remember that, man. I was telling you all about Destiny Lab and Praying Mantis and Ninja Scroll and all them, right? Yeah, yeah, Ninja Scroll, Destiny Boy, yo, Lab. Check this out, man. I was on YouTube the other day and I seen this girl, yo, she was fly like that. I mean like 
Lord, she was like an insect. She was so fly, type fly. She was fly. Oh, I got you, man. <laughs> nah, for real though, man. I checked out some of her stuff on YouTube, man. The girl name is Erin okay. Moffat, man. Oh, Erin Moffat. You gotta check her out. Okay. She okay. got some banging documentaries on there. Oh, got some Yo, she was just some videos for Ninja Scroll and Destiny Lab. Say what? Yeah, that's right. I said she did videos for Ninja Scroll and Destiny oh, Lab. Oh, okay. So she did videos for, yeah, for Ninja man, Scroll and Destiny Lab. Yeah, man. She feel good with hers, man. She did some documentaries on the Black Goo. Black Goo. Yeah, man, on the black goo. Oh, for real. So go check it out. Aaron Moffitt. Aaron, Aaron Moffitt. L. Moffitt. Okay. Or whatever you want to type in the search engine, you'll see this beautiful girl pop up in the circle. Yeah, I knew that's right. Yeah, man. Check it out. All right. That's Aaron Moffitt. Aaron Moffitt. E R I N M O F F E T T. Okay. Player, I'm telling you, you got to get with that. Yo, I'm with you, player. Woo! Linty, Linty Stills. Who did you call? I, I, I call no one. Ah! I, don't lie to me. Who did you call? I call I am Awake Radio. They help people like me in need to learn the truth. Linty Stills. I am Awake Radio. I remember you. Awake Radio, home of the awake. <laughs> yeah! You're listening to the I Am Awake Show with your host, Ninja Scroll, right here. On I am awake radio. Get it. What's up? Ah, what's up, y'all? It's Ninja Scroll right here on the I am awake show on I am awake radio. Ooh, ah. Anyway, yo, it's the holiday season. And a whoop de doo, a rippity bump, a bumpity bump, whatever that song says. <laughs> I hear that all the time in Dieter Dings. That's why I work, y'all. I'll be up in Dieter Dings stocking my shelves, you know what I mean? And all I hear is, it's the holiday season. And a whoop de doo, to bump de bump, a hippity hop, and a slumpity slump. <laughs> I'm like, yo. What? <laughs> The heck was that? I just heard a noise. I'm the only one in the house. <laughs> Somebody about to get jacked. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Zeus. Oh, it must have been Zeus. I thought I thought I, I thought he was behind me. Anyway, um <laughs> yo. It's the holiday season, you know, and everybody around this time of year, you know, is happy, joyous, loving, caring. It's the Christmas spirit, y'all. And everybody assumes that everybody celebrates Christmas. You know, because, I mean, nowadays I think people are getting a little more hip to the game because not nowadays some people instead of saying Merry Christmas to everybody they say Happy Holidays okay like that is different we know what you mean when you say Happy Holidays because the only it's only one holiday it's not holidays I don't consider New Year's Day a holiday I guess the world does, so I guess they say happy holidays for New Year's Day too. But but basically we know when it, when somebody comes up to you around Christmas time and they say happy holidays, you know they're talking about Christmas. 
and they want to say Merry Christmas. But they can't say Merry Christmas anymore because some people don't celebrate Christmas. And I think the world has gotten to a point where the people, they, well, they believe that the people that don't celebrate Christmas are some type of cult or <laughs> they're like Muslims or they're, or they're Jehovah Witnesses, you know, or they're atheists. Well, I can't even say atheists because I believe some atheists. Matter of fact, I know, I know that some atheists celebrate Christmas. So I can't even say that about the atheists, but I can say that they, they, they think you're either Muslim or, or Jehovah Witness or some other type of religion that doesn't believe in Jesus or doesn't believe that Jesus is the son of God. And so right off the bat, they just assume that you're one of those. You know, not giving any thought that, like when people ask me, what is, or if they say to me, uh, are you, like, I, I got this question today, for instance. I was at work today and uh, somebody came up to me and they said, hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm like, how you doing? You know, how you doing? It's a customer, you know, so I'm talking, we're being nice, I'm stocking my shelves and whatnot, you know, and he comes by, he goes, how you doing, man? I'm like, hey, brother, how you doing, you know? You ready for tomorrow, he goes? Are you ready for tomorrow? And I was like, what's tomorrow? <laughs> Christmas. Oh, oh, I don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> it's like telling, <laughs> it's like this. The response you get from people, it's like shocking. Like, huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it's like when it, if a telemark, y'all should try this. A telemarketer calls your phone. And when they call your phone, you you know the phone ring. You know, you know, my phone, my phone. Let me try. This. Let me show y'all. All right, so phone ring. You be like, you like this. You on your phone? You're like, <laughs> your phone ring. You be like, hello. They be like, hey, Mr. Walden. I be like, yes. Hi, this is so and so from so and so. How you feel? How you doing today? I be like, I ain't doing too good, man. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. I'm not doing good at all, man. I just, I'm not feeling well. I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> I be like that. And they, and they be like, they be like, uh, <laughs> you mess up their whole deal, man. The whole spew that they had is, is just done. You also try that. You know what I, I learned that from? I learned to do that when I used to work at a telemarketing place years back. And one of the rules that they would tell us is um, never ask the customer how they're doing. <laughs> and I understood why back then. Because if they're having a bad day, they would tell us this. If they ever have, if they're having a bad day, then it's it's not going to go well for you on your call. So for some reason, these, these cats, they still ask, how you doing? <laughs> and I know the tricks. So I'd be like, I ain't doing good, man. This, I'm, having, I'm not feeling well. I'm sick. I don't know if I'm going to make it, man. <laughs> be like that. And yo, they just be like, they just, be, they just sit there like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, we'll, we'll try back again later. <laughs> they be like that. That's that's how. That's how people are when they be like talking about Christmas. They be like, "Are you ready for tomorrow?" You be like, "What's tomorrow?" <laughs> they be like, "It's Christmas." You be like, "I don't celebrate Christmas." They be like, uh, "They be like, uh, uh, uh like the, like the telemarketer." <laughs> um, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. And if it's a, if it's a stranger, they're not going to ask you why. You know, a stranger's not going to say, "Well, why don't you celebrate Christmas?" But a you know a, a friend or a family member might ask you, "Well, why don't you celebrate Christmas?" And the first thing we do 
those of us that know what Christmas is about, I, mean, I think it's a mistake, is we, we say well, it's a pagan holiday. <laughs> it is a pagan holiday, you know, but, you know, they always can come back with some type of response, you know, it's, we made it, it's about Jesus, it's not about the pagan stuff, blah. I, I don't celebrate Christmas because it's a tradition of man. It wasn't. It wasn't celebrated by the by the disciples. His close, Jesus' closest friends, basically his family, did not celebrate his birth. The whole wise men, the three wise men, they say, they tell you it's three wise men. We three kings of Orient are. Bearing gifts, we travel so far. Three kings? I'm trying to find in the Bible still to this day where it said there was three of them. I don't know what to tell y'all, but it's not. it doesn't say it was three kings. There were three gifts. I guess that people will assume that that's from only three kings, but maybe it was 20 kings. And they all got together and bought three three gifts. I, I, we don't know, but we don't know if it was three kings. But what we do know is that they came to Jesus and gave him gifts. That was it. The Bible doesn't say that anybody else came to Jesus and gave him gifts. The Bible does say that there were, there were shepherds out in the field. And, you know, people people didn't, people were looking for this, for their Redeemer at that time. They were looking for their Savior. Their King. The Christ. Jesus, the king, is who they were looking for at that time. And there was no, um, you know, when, when Jesus was first born, yeah, the, the kings came and gave him gifts. They gave him gifts. They gave him gifts. Then they gave each other gifts. The kings didn't come there and, and exchange gifts with each other. They didn't, the shepherds in the field didn't exchange gifts with each other. They rejoiced that their king has come to free them. Their king has come. So they re rejoiced for that reason. But the gift giving has been twisted because, like I said, the... the The wise men did give Jesus gifts. But they didn't give each other gifts. So why do we give each other gifts on somebody else's birthday? For instance, if your birthday comes up, do you want people to give everybody else gifts and not you? Like, do you want your mom and dad when your birthday comes up to exchange gifts with each other? It's your birthday. So let's exchange gifts with each other, but not give you any gifts. Christmas to me does so many things. Uh, it does a lot of things, in my opinion. It, 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 um, it takes away let me see well first let me, let me, let me step back like I said it, it, it is based, it's definitely a tradition of man it was not done in the Bible after Jesus was born and then when he was one you don't hear any, any talk about in the Bible you don't hear any talk about people uh, uh, coming together and celebrating his birth when he was five, you don't hear about people celebrating his birth. When he was 14, you don't hear about people celebrating his birth. In fact, as he got older, people hated him. 
No one celebrated him being there. They didn't want him there. So let's bring that into perspective into these times now. Do people want Jesus here now? Well, us believers, us true believers, yes. But we're not talking about true believers. We're talking about we're talking about unbelievers. They don't believe. So why would they want Jesus here now? They don't want Christianity. They don't want Christians. They don't want Bibles. They don't want this stuff. So there's no reason to believe that they want Jesus here. And just like in those times back then, they didn't want Jesus there. So at what point in the Bible back then in those times were they celebrating Jesus' birth? They didn't do it when he was first born. And they didn't do it throughout his life. You know, it, it really doesn't matter if his birthday was on December 25th or September 11th or sometime in September or October or, you know, we all, we, most of us who, who looked into this know that it, it definitely was not September, uh, definitely was not December 25th. It was in the fall seasons, September, October, all, late August. But mainly we all, most of us agree it's around September you know, first or second week in September. Most of us who looked into this have, have come to that conclusion. But does it matter what day his birthday falls on? If it was never instructed to us to celebrate it in the first place? We're celebrating it and all we're doing is following the tradition of man. And what does the Bible have to say about that? What does Jesus himself have to say about following the traditions of man? Because that's what they are. From Easter to Valentine's Day to Halloween To Christmas, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. These are all traditions that man has made. And are we as believers supposed to follow these traditions? Is God pleased with us following man's traditions? You know, I always say to my kids to this very day. In fact, I said it to them today when they were over here a couple of them were over here I said to them do y'all remember what I used to tell you guys when you were little when the world is doing one going one way when the world <gasps> excuse me when the world is going one way they said we go the opposite and that's how it's supposed to be when the world is doing one thing us as believers are supposed to be doing the opposite of what the world is doing. Because the world is following the world. They're not following Christ. They're not following God. The world is following the world. We follow God. So, if the world and the whole world celebrates Christmas. It's promoted on TV. It's promoted everywhere. The whole world is celebrating Christmas. What should true believers be doing? We should be doing the opposite. 
because that is a tradition of man. It's not of God. I'm not saying that, and, and people are going to jump in here and say crazy stuff most likely down there in the, in the comment section. You know, that's fine. And I'm not saying that people are, are damned to hell. I'm not saying that uh, because I've got into it with people over this whole thing. I've almost lost friends over this. If you want to call Facebook people that I people that have on Facebook friends, I don't have anybody, uh, you know, out here in the real world that I convert that I converse with, that I hang out with. I don't have that. I'm a loner. I'm almost like an introvert. I stay in my house. I do my jobs. I come home. I talk to my wife on the phone. And when I move to Montana, it's going to be the same thing. See the same way. That's why we get along so well. We'll be together in the house. We'll go out together and we go out. We'll go do our jobs, whatever we got to do, and we'll come back home. Yeah, there might be. She she has a couple neighbors next door. But she, it's not like she hangs out with the neighbors over their house over here. And, and you know, and we have poker nights and, and bingo nights. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it's not like that. I know that she goes to Bible study every on Mondays. And, but a lot of kids, act, a lot of her kids act, have activities and stuff like that. So we'll be doing that stuff. But she's not going to catch me hanging out with the boys. Because I don't do that. I don't want that. But, you know, I, I've, I've lost a lot of friends. I have lost a lot of friends, I guess. I'm just going to say it like that on, on Facebook. Of people that, you know, <clears throat> we get into arguments about this whole Christmas thing. And, and is it right for believers to do? And I, like I said, I'm not going to, I can't sit here and say that, that you, you're not, you're not going to go to hell because you believe in Christmas or you celebrate Christmas and you're not, it's not, no, it's not none of that. I just think that if we're going to walk with the Lord, then we walk with the Lord. Enoch walked with God. Would Enoch celebrate Christmas? He walked with God. I don't think God would walk with the world. We're supposed to be separate from them. That's how we can tell the difference. It's the wheat and the tares being separated. And I believe we're supposed to be separate from the world, not of the world, in the world, but not of the world. I truly believe that celebrating or any of these days is being of the world you're doing the things that the world does the world worldly traditions that man has made we're going to take a break when we come back we're going to talk about uh when we come back we're going to talk about the effects of these worldly traditions. Okay, we're going to talk about what these, how these worldly traditions affect us and our kids, especially this Christmas one. So, you listen to the I'm Awake show on I'm Awake Radio. This is Ninja Scroll. We'll be right back after this quick break. This, this, this is, is I, I Am, am awake, I radio. Am awake Radio. Hi, I'm not Scott Bakula. And when I'm online listening to the radio, I listen to I Am Awake Radio. Or maybe I don't. I Am Awake Radio. He's not Scott Bakula. And he doesn't listen to us. But maybe you should. Yo, man. What's up with your brain? No brain today. I was up all night watching the news, man. Man, you really are brainwashed. What you gonna do about it? I'm gonna go listen to I Am Awake Radio. I'm Awake Radio. I heard about them. Yeah, man. They know they stuff when it comes to speaking the truth. I ain't messing with that news no more. If you are tired of being lied to by the media, if you are tired of being a mind-controlled slave, if you want to break out of the matrix, then call I Am Awake Radio at 563-999-3575. That's I Am Awake Radio at 563-999-3575. Break the chains. I am Awake Radio. 
I'll remember that. This is Reverend Bunny Griggs, and I approve this message. The global elites want you to get the sneak bites. The World Economic Forum wants you to get the snake bites. Joe Biden and Donald Trump want you to get the snake bites. Democrats, Republicans want you to get the snake bites. Two cheeks of the same butt. Reverend Bunny Griggs says, Man, you must be out your cotton picking mind if you get that snake bite, man. I'm Reverend Bunny Griggs, and if you get that snake bite, I got to say something wrong with you, man. Man, what's wrong with you? You ain't been don't need no snake bite. What you need a snake bite for, man? Ain't no six foot killer out there. They tell you it's a six foot killer that's floating around up in the air and all that like that, man. You must be out your mind, man. Ain't no six foot killer out there. It only goes six feet. It don't go no further than six feet, man. You mean to tell me if I just stand six feet away, I can't get killed by the six foot killer? Man, what of it? You must be out your mind. Don't believe in the six foot killer. And don't believe in the snake bite. You better not get it. Peace. What's up, y'all? What's going on? I'm Joan London. And when I'm watching YouTube and I want to get some real good shows to watch that's entertaining and fun and bring me some good information. I turn on I Am Awake Radio. That's right. Just go to Ninja Scrolls YouTube channel and check out I Am Awake Radio. In particular, the I Am Awake show. That's right. I said it. I'm Joan London. Say I ain't. And I keep... All in the mind. If you wanna test me, I'm sure you'll find the things I'll teach you. Be sure to teach you. Nevertheless, to get a lesson from teacher, I'll kick. Yeah, man, you know this is it, man. This is the I Am Awake show with Ninja Scroll right here, man, on I Am Awake Radio. What's up, y'all? Ninja Scroll right here on the I Am Awake show on I Am Awake Radio. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me. We um back from our little break, and we're talking about Christmas and why I don't celebrate it. If you want to celebrate it, that's up to you. And yeah, I'm not here to debate. If you should or shouldn't, I'm not here to talk you out of it. I'm not here to talk you into it. I just explained why I don't. You can figure all that out on your own. That's between you and the Lord. But what I want to do now is talk about some of the effects that following this tradition of Christmas does have on kids and parents. The family. It does have effects. Um, well, I mean, we can go into the whole Santa Claus thing. Let's talk about that first, I guess. Um, just, we all, I, I can pretty much say all of us probably have been taught about Santa Claus have been taught that Santa Claus is real. Have been taught that Santa Claus has reindeer. That he lives at the North Pole. That he's a big white dude with a beard. And a red suit. And flies around on a sleigh with his reindeer pony. These are things that we were told when we were younger by people that we trust 
That's the key. By people that we trust, that we look up to, that we admire, that we want to pattern our lives after. They told us these things. And we've told our kids, those of us who are old, and, who are old I'm 51, all right? So I have six kids. I, I, and I, when my kids were young, I did the same thing. Man's tradition was passed down. Man's tradition was passed down. And man's tradition being passed down has effects, side effects on the family. <clears throat> One being that you have lied to your kids because at some point when they get older, they you either tell them the truth, some of us have told them the truth, but some of us, even if you did, it doesn't matter. Some of us have told them the truth and some of us didn't tell them the truth and they found out on their own through other means either through their friends or through their teachers or through their aunts or uncles grandmoms grandpops some other way they found out the truth that santa claus was not real and that you lied to them someone that they do not expect to lie to them lied to them <clears throat> so that that can have damaging that could be damaging to a, to kids. That's their parents lied to them. Now they're thinking, okay, mom and dad lied to me about this. You may not think that it's that serious. You know, you might not think that that's what they're believing. That they think that the mom and dad lied. I can't remember myself if I thought that. I But I, at one point when I was, I don't know, 20, 25, I was like, yeah, my mom and dad lied to me. I can't say that, that I said that when I was a kid, when I was 10 years old, or, you know, once I found out that Santa Claus wasn't real, I can't say that I was like, I, like, as soon as I found out, I, oh, mom, why'd you lie to me about this? You know, I, I don't, it wasn't like that, but, I mean, I did realize it at one point that they lied to me about something for no reason. Um, you get kids that write letters to Santa Claus because one of their parents might be ill and they're asking Santa Claus for what they want for Christmas is for their mom and dad, mom or dad to get better. Or let's say their parents split up and they get divorced and they, they write Santa Claus and say, um, can you bring daddy back home? Or can you bring mom back home? Or can you put mom and dad back together? People write Santa Claus these types of letters. Kids write Santa Claus these types of letters. And they go unanswered. Does that scar kids at all? <clears throat> These are the types of things we have to look at when, we, when we're passing down man's traditions. Because that's what this is. This is man's tradition. By telling your kids that Santa Claus is real and then by them finding out that he's not, if you are a believer in Christ, how does that affect your kids when you're trying to explain to them about Jesus? Jesus. Like, like a parent should do, a, a parent who believes in Jesus Christ should be raising his kid up that way or her kid up or their kids up in that way. How do you explain that when uh, after you lied to them about Santa Claus, are they now supposed to believe in Jesus? You're telling them that Jesus was born from a virgin that God that came down as a man and was born from a virgin 
lived a perfect life, sinless, did no sin at all, was crucified on the cross, buried in a grave for three days and three nights, and then rose up from the grave. You're telling your kids that after you lied to them about Santa Claus. Let's say you told them about that before you lied, before they found out about Santa Claus. Can that affect your kids' belief? Because they can't believe what you say now. Let's say you told them all about Jesus before they knew about Santa Claus. And then you tell them about Santa Claus. And they write letters to Santa Claus. They do all this stuff. They don't pray to Jesus. They write letters to Santa Claus. How come they're not, not praying to Jesus for the things they want or need? Because you're telling them that Santa Claus, he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. You're telling them that Santa is the man, not Jesus. So they write letters to Santa Claus. And I'm, I'm saying this, this is before, this is, I'm sorry, this is after you told them about Jesus. So why would they believe in Jesus after they, when they find out that Santa Claus, this whole Santa Claus thing was a big, huge lie? Why would they believe in Jesus? You lied to them about Santa Claus. Maybe mom and dad's lying to me about Jesus too. You're not gonna, you can't say that it doesn't have an effect on their belief system. Because you're somebody that they're trusting, that they look up to. And you're lying to them. Whether it be before, after you tell them about Jesus or before you tell them about Jesus it's going to affect their thought process and it's going to affect them how they look at you and the information that you give them can they trust the information that you give them any information now can they trust any information that you give them once you've proven to be untrustworthy because you lied. Oh, it's just for fun. That's what you'll get. That's the type of response that people will give you. It doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't affect the kids. You know? Another, another way that following man's traditions can affect the family is how the kids well, well number one we looked at how the kids perceive their mother and father they, they could be looked at as untrustworthy dishonest and the things that they tell them from then on can be looked at sideways I mean, the kids can now look at their parents and the things that they say and, and, and now second guess everything that their parents teach them uh, because they've been lied to by the parents. This other way here is you're teaching your kids um, to be ungrateful. How so? Well, See, Satan is smart. Satan is not stupid. He 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 knows how to 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 use these traditions to to change the way we all think and we all act and and to and to raise up the kids the way he wants them to be raised up. He wants the kids to be to not trust their parents. He wants the kids to be ungrateful to their parents. Aren't those two of the things, don't you think Satan wants that from, from children? You know? So that he can step in and give them those things that the parents are supposed to be giving them. 
you got to ask yourself, is that something that Satan would do? Could he use the traditions of men to bring in these things? We already talked about how you lie, you're lying, you lying to your kids can make them not trust you. You are now untrustworthy to your kids. Anything that you say to them will be second guessed. The ungrateful part is what we're talking about here now. Because you tell your kids that Santa Claus, I mean, I'm going to build this up. Watch how this works. It's going to go all the way up to the parents. You tell your kids that Santa Claus is bringing you the gifts. Oh, this is a gift from Santa. Santa rides on a sleigh. He has reindeer pulling it, Rudolph. Red nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? He's got Rudolph pulling the sleigh, leading the way, shining the bright in the darkness, and he's traveling from the North Pole, and he's going all over the world at tremendous speeds, sliding down people's chimneys. Even people that don't have chimneys, somehow he gets in their house and, and he sticks these presents under the tree. This is Santa Claus doing this for these kids. The kids write letters to Santa. Santa, can you give me a Tonka truck? Santa, can you give me a PS5? Santa, I want a new bike. And the parents get these lists from the kids and or the teachers get these lists from the kids. And 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 then we, the parents, go out and try to fulfill these kids' desires. And when we do, it's from Santa. They think it came from Santa because you're playing this role. It comes from Santa. So now they get it and they have no gratitude to the parents. They're ungrateful because the parents didn't get it for them. Santa Claus did. Now, granted, I don't think too many people. I know my parents told us the whole Santa Claus thing. I, I, I think I even at one point in my life, I can remember my dad dressing up as Santa Claus. I'm almost positive <laughs> that that happened. <laughs> but, but in the long, in 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 the end of things, like when when the Christmas came and uh, we opened our gifts. It didn't say from Santa Claus on it. It said from mom and dad. So most of us, I, I bet most of us, when we opened our presents when we were younger, it said from mom and dad. I don't think it said from Santa Claus. <laughs> if it said from Santa Claus, then you're really setting yourself up for what I'm talking about. But at the same time, you still taught the kids that when they were young that Santa Claus is bringing these gifts. You taught them that the value of the gifts weren't as much as um, as they should be. Not I'm not talking about the price of the gift. I'm talking about that you, the parent, works go to work every day, and you make this money, and you figure out ways to buy them gifts for Christmas, and and, and just you know for your kids, and they don't understand what you went through to get. See, my, watch where I'm going with this. They don't understand what you went through to give them the gifts that they got. So they're not as grateful when they think that it came from Santa Claus and not from you. So now the kids, when they, when they, before they know that Santa Claus isn't real, they're ungrateful. And after they know that Santa Claus isn't real, they're ungrateful and you're untrustworthy. So you see all this and you say to yourself, these kids, I, I did all this stuff for these kids. They don't know what I do for them. They don't understand how much I do for them. And, and, and so now... You know, you're, you're trying to show them. 
and what you end up doing is like, I'm gonna take this stuff back from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm taking these gifts back. You don't, you don't like this, or you're not grateful, or you're not happy with this, or you ain't grateful kids, I'm taking all this stuff back. <laughs> That's what we do. That's exactly what we do. I'm taking this stuff back. But um, what ends up happening is the kids become ungrateful and they just keep wanting more and more and more and want, want more gifts and more gifts and more gifts. And and most of us parents, we go out and we try to work harder and we, or we do whatever we got to do to get them more and more stuff. That's what we do. <laughs> and... Um, it's not good. It's just not good. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about how the parents uh, are affected by these traditions of men. You're listening to Ninja Scroll on the I'm Awake show right here on the I'm Awake radio. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to I Am Awake Radio, home of the awake. Solo 
never tried to show you things that open up your eyes to the truth. It's hard to break you from the lies they're telling you. I can slowly feel you pulling away from me. I don't have a clue. Want you to see the things they try to do to you. I keep wishing you would listen to the words I have to say.
together Talk conspiracies, girl, you know you're very clever Think the same way, argue all the ever Got each other's back, Lord, keep us safe together What's up, y'all? Ninja Scroll. I am awake show. Mm -hmm. I am awake radio. What's going down? Yeah, we talking about the happy holidays. Happy holidays. Love the merry bells be swinging. Happy holidays to you. That's Black Velvet right there. <laughs> what the heck is Black Velvet? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what's up? Welcome back, y'all. Um, we, we were talking about Christmas and how it's a tradition of man and how man's traditions can affect the family. All right. So we talked about the kids, um, how they're affected by the parents lying. We, we talked about how kids can be ungrateful to their parents because the parents tell them that Santa Claus bought the gifts. And, or kids, kids can just be ungrateful, period. Um, I don't know. But we talked about that. Now we're going to talk about the effect that man's tradition can have on the adults. And this, for me, is really big because I see how the world uses this to make money, 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 uh, uh, money, 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 uh, uh, money. They do. This is where the economics comes in. This is where the economy comes in. This is where the bank, the stores make their bank right here. They make their bank off you. <laughs> With man's tradition. And just think, look, 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 look. Let's look at some of the traditions. Look at Easter. They making money, 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 money. Uh, uh, money on Easter. That's man's tradition. On Valentine's Day, they making money, 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 money. Uh, 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 money. On Valentine's Day, they making money. That's man's tradition. On Halloween, money, 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 uh, 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 money. They making money. That's a man's tradition. What else? 
St. Patrick's Day. Money, 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 money. Yo, it can, it can go on. It can go on and on and on and keep going. Because that's the whole, the key is to make money. Off of you, nigga. Off of you. That's what they're doing. Let's, 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 let's take a step. Let's think. Let's think about this, all right? We got parents who feel good about buying their kids stuff. They have commercials out. I don't know if they still have them out, but I, I, I know two or three years ago, there was commercials. You was calling, calling parents or people who buy gifts for people. There would be people shopping in the mall and you would be buying this and buying that and picking this off the shelf and spending this money and they come all happy. I'm sure maybe you guys have probably seen the commercial. They come out happy, they have bags in each hand and they're dancing and there were a super... What, were they, what did they call them? A Christmas hero. You are a Christmas hero because you got everything that everybody wanted. You were called a Christmas hero. What does that do? What, so what does that mean? If you're a hero, you're put up above people. What they are doing here is some people get the they want the praise I know this personally I've been through it not me I'm not the one that did it but they want the praise they want people to say thank you they want people to look up to them and say you're the best they want all the accolades that come with buying somebody a gift so the gift doesn't, it becomes not for the person that they're giving it to. The gift becomes something that you get something out of. So it becomes part of self. It becomes a selfish thing for a lot of people. I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying every parent that buys their kids gifts, gifts like this, but it's a lot of people who become, it becomes about them and not about the gift giving, not about Christmas it becomes about them because they're they, they get that feeling of look what I did and, and what they'll do is they'll they'll buy the gifts for the kids they'll do you know take them whatever do whatever they gotta do for Christmas and then they'll go on to Facebook and say I did this for the kids look what I did They'll post pictures of the kids opening presents to say, and then everybody be like, oh, look at all those presents you got. You're a good mom, or you're a good dad, or you're good parents. You got all these gifts for the kids. And not not everybody takes it the way I'm saying now. I'm not saying that everybody when they when they get compliments, they take it and they say, and they run with it like I'm like like I'm portraying. I'm not saying everybody does that. But there's a majority of, of us that that do take that. And they get the praise. Oh, and they and they want that praise. They want that. It makes them feel good. It does. It makes people feel good when they when when you're told you're this and you're that. When the kids say thank you, mom, that's fine. But when you post it on the Facebook and you're showing everybody what you did for your kids because you want the glory. This is supposed to be Jesus. A, a a a a a celebration for Jesus' birthday, but somehow people get the glory. Jesus is taken way out of this. The world does not want Jesus. And they'll have this little holiday and they'll say, and they'll have their little songs, The Way in the Manger and We Three Kings and all these Jesus songs. And three quarters or more don't even believe in him. They may know the story, but they don't even believe the story. And they're out here celebrating a day that's supposed to be the day, say, 
That, that's not what that's not what the Bible says. Show me a Bible verse where it says to celebrate Jesus' birthday. It doesn't. Like I said, I'm not trying to convince anybody not to celebrate Christmas. If that's what you want to do, then you can do that. I'm not here for that. I'm not here for the, de for the debate. I'm just expressing what I see and the dangers of man's traditions and why Jesus himself tells us not to follow man's traditions. We shouldn't be following the world at all. When the world goes that way, we're supposed to go that way. We're not supposed to walk with the world. These are some of the things that I see happening when it comes to following man's traditions, especially this one here. But Halloween can be the same. Valentine's Day can be the same. Uh, you know, they can all be the same thing. I mean, there's ways of, and I know it's tough. Look, I was married, my ex-wife, after, I, I don't know, it must have been maybe 2015 or 2013 or 14 or maybe 2012. It may have been as early as 20, 2009 maybe even that I stopped celebrating Christmas. It was probably around around that time. No, you know, in fact it was. It might have been either 2008, 2007. I haven't celebrated Christmas in that long. Not me personally. But I was married yeah, that's, that's, that's right. I was married to my ex-wife back then, 2007, 2006. You know, we got, we got divorced in 2017. So for like 11 years, maybe more, when I stopped celebrating Christmas and I told my kids all about it and why we shouldn't celebrate it. And why it, you know, the reasons, reasons, what we should be doing year round. You know, I, I had my kids reading the Bible with me. We had Bible studies once or twice a week. We did that. And, and they listen and they understand what the word of God says. And I would explain to them why we shouldn't do certain things. And it's tough because if you're married to somebody that doesn't, agree with you on this on this on this if you're <laughs> one of the dogs is making some weird noise if you're married to someone that that doesn't agree with you on this this is why we're not to be on equally yoked but if you're married to someone who doesn't agree with you on this and um they continue to buy the kids gifts. What, what can you do? You know, it's not really much you can do. You, what are you going to wrap up, grab, grab up all the, give me them gifts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and toss them out. She continued to buy them gifts and she continued to put up the Christmas trees and all that. I stopped. I wouldn't, I, I, I left all that alone. I used to wrap gifts up and, and go buy the Christmas tree. That We used to get real ones when I was, when I was into this stuff. Used to get the real Christmas tree. I go buy it and and put it up. I remember the Christmas tree fell on me and the kids laughed and it was a big funny thing. They're still laughing at now. We're still talking about it now. Cause the the trees I used to get were huge, man. I wanted the biggest tree in the lot. So we would, uh, you know, I would go get the tree and we'd put it up and decorate it and sing, deck the halls and <laughs> all them songs. <laughs> the Christmas spirit, man. What spirit is that? Isn't that a good question? What spirit is the Christmas spirit? Ooh. But that's what we used to do. So and so, you know, my ex-wife would 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 want to do this stuff, and we would get into arguments every year about this, about how she wanted to do it because it made her feel good. And she would be one of the ones that would go on Facebook and post and look what I did. I got the kids all this stuff. I did this. 
oh, you're such a great mom, and you're this, and you're that, and you're the best. And, 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 and she gets all the accolades. I said accolades. Because <laughs> I be bugging. Sometimes, I, I, look, I like to have fun sometimes. All right? But anyway, that's, that's what she would get. And um, she get all the praise. And there are a lot of parents that this happens to. And it becomes about self. It just becomes about self. I just wanted to touch on that, you know, for a little bit, for this little hour and, oh, almost an hour and a half that I've been recording. Actually, it's been an hour and 37 minutes, so it's more, more than an hour and a half. Yes, but, you know, just something to think about, y'all. Just something to think about. I'm, I'm not here to debate and, and, and try to turn your thought process on uh, celebrating Christmas because you're going to do what you want to do, and that's fine. You know, I don't think, I don't think, I know you're not going to hell. If you're truly born again, that's not sending you to hell. That's not doing anything. I don't know if it's even angering God. I just know that we're not supposed, supposed to follow man's traditions. And, and I stopped following man's traditions, all of them, a long time ago. I mean, you can make your own family traditions where it's not a worldly thing, where the whole world isn't doing it. Like if you wanted to, I don't know, do something in June, July, August, September. But how about how about your tradition be you celebrate Jesus every day? How about that? How about we have a tradition where we celebrate Jesus every day? Where we praise him every day. Where we thank him every day. When we ask for forgiveness for our sins every day. When we repent every day of whatever we are into. We, we, we fight and we struggle with these sins in the world. That the worldly sins that, that come into us. And, and that sin nature is fighting us. And, and the Holy Spirit in us is fighting back. And that war going on inside of us. How about we, we, we use those traditions. Instead of the world's. You're not following man's traditions if you're following God's traditions. That means man's traditions is going that way and God's is going that way. And we're supposed to be following him, not them. Just something to think about. Like I said, I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to condemn I'm not here to argue. I'm not here for none of that. I'm just putting out a little something that I believe. And, you know, you guys can do what you want with that. <laughs> it's up to y'all what y'all want to do. <laughs> Bottom line, this can also be a time of year where, because everybody's on the, in that mindset of Jesus' birth, how about you make a tradition where you and your family go out and witness to people during this time of year? Because people are already thinking, well, number one, people are happy. They're more acceptable. They're more receptive to what you have to say because they're happy. It's the Christmas spirit. Hey, buddy, happy holidays. <laughs> That's what you get, right? Happy holidays to you too, bro. You know Jesus loves you? <laughs> That'll scare him right off. All that happy holiday stuff will be, will be out the window. Are you saved, brother? <laughs> I sent it to my ex-girlfriend a couple years back. We was, we was at the toy store. She was buying gifts for her son. And I was like, let me ask you a question. I ain't buying nothing. Because <laughs> I don't do it. She was like, how come you don't celebrate Christmas? I say, because it ain't Jesus' birthday. That's all I tell her. I don't get it because she ain't going to understand the pagan thing, number one. She's not going to understand what the Bible says about following man's tradition because she wasn't into the Bible. I was This girl was worldly. I should have never been with her. I was unequally yoked. I was wrong. And I repent that. And I ask Jesus every day to forgive me for that because I did some bad stuff I shouldn't have been doing. I shouldn't have been with that woman. But I remember saying that to her. I remember saying... <laughs> 
why do you celebrate Christmas? <laughs> what do you mean? She goes, I said, you don't, you believe in Jesus? You don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> why do you? That's a good question, right? <laughs> why do you celebrate Christmas if you don't believe in Jesus? <laughs> and you can't ooh I just hit my microphone you can't sit here and say that the entire world <laughs> believes in Jesus <laughs> it's supposed to be his birthday and people that don't even believe in Jesus are celebrating it And I said it to her, you don't even believe in Jesus. <laughs> Your dad is an atheist. <laughs> and he's buying gifts for Christmas. You know why? Because it's not about Jesus. It's not about God. It's not about being a born again Christian. It's just man's tradition. This is just what men do every time around this time of year. This is their tradition. We just do this. Why? We've just been doing this forever. We were doing this before Jesus was born. And they were. They were this is all sun worship. So they were doing this before Jesus was born. It's just a tradition. And that's why the whole world follows it. Not this brother. Not this brother. That's all I got for tonight. But I want to thank you guys for sticking with me for this time. I know this is a very touchy subject. I hope I didn't... Well, if I stepped on your toes, then I stepped on your toes. I'm not going to you know, apologize for that, but... I just hope it wasn't too rough on you. And I hope that, you know, we can have a civil conversation in the comment section. If that's what y'all want to do, that's fine. I'm not here. Like I said, I'm not going to be debating nobody in that because I'm not here for that. If, that's what, if you want to celebrate this holiday, then you can do that. I, I have no problem with that. I, I'm not trying to convince you not to. I'm just telling you what I feel. But that being said, Let's focus on Jesus Christ. If you want to use this holiday for anything, use it to win souls for Jesus. Because it's a great time to do it, like I was just saying. It's a perfect time. People are more receptible. People are in better moods. People kind of think about, some people think it's Jesus' birthday. Some people think it's about Jesus. Some, I mean, even even unbelievers know what this holiday is really about, what, what it's supposed to be for. We're told it's about. We're told it's about Jesus' birthday. And even unbelievers know that. But let me just say this one thing before I, before I close out. They don't want Jesus. Okay? Come on, y'all. The world does not want Jesus. You can say Jesus is the reason for the season and you can say all this stuff. This is a worldly holiday. They do not want Jesus. The world does not want Jesus. That's why they put Xmas over Christmas. They cry, they X Christ out of it. All over the country, they take, you can't have nativity scenes out. You can't have nativity scenes because they don't want Jesus. They want the presence they want their Christmas trees. They want their feel-good songs. They want their hot chocolate. They want their Santa Claus. They don't want Jesus. The world does not want Jesus. Look in the Bible. It tells you in there that the world don't want Jesus. It 
it tells you in Revelations that the world is going to look at him and, and be angry when he's coming back. They're going to be angry. Just look at how they treat born-again believers now. Look at where the, the Bible used to be in schools. It's taken out of schools. They don't want Jesus. They used to pray in school in the 1960s. They took that out of school in 1962. They don't want Jesus. The world wants what the world wants. And Satan is the God of this world right now. He don't want Jesus. Like I said, use this time to bring them Jesus. How about that? Use this time instead of buying presents for your kids and presents for other people. Use this time to witness to the unbelievers and give them a real gift. The free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ offers us all. Eternal life with him in heaven. Not a PS5, not an Xbox 365, whatever they got out now. Not something that you have to pay for. This is a free gift. That you can give people. And you can help them get saved. From eternal damnation. Make that a tradition. With your family. Every year. Let's pray before we get up out of here. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for the time that you've given me tonight to talk about uh, man's traditions, Lord. And we know that what your word says about man's traditions. And I hope that um, somebody hears this message and digs deep into your word and finds out the truth. I'm not here to squabble with anybody I'm not here to debate Lord you know that I'm just here just speaking the word and just speaking my own heart and if it isn't right Lord I ask that you strike it from anybody's memory if I'm not right Lord I ask that you set me right and if somebody out there can show me in your word that what I'm saying is not correct I ask that you let them show me with love and that you Lord um, bring them to me and Give me the correction that's needed. And I, Lord, you know, let give me the hum humility. Let me be humble enough, Lord, to repent and turn from that and publicly acknowledge my wrong, if I am wrong, Lord. But I thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for everything that you do. I thank you for everybody that listened to this program tonight Lord and I ask that you bless everybody out there bless their families and keep them all safe and healthy and um, I just thank you so much Lord Jesus for everybody that you bring into my life I thank you for my wife Erin Moffitt Lord I thank you so much for her for her family and I, I just want to thank you for bringing her into my life and Lord um, I ask that you keep us together and keep our ministry strong keep our ministry going I ask that you will put in people's hearts to go over to Odyssey and sign up for her channel there. I know she really would like that, really needs people to go to Odyssey to get away from YouTube, to get away from these um, restrictions that YouTube uh, puts on us here and tries to get us to, you know, tries to silence us and censor us, Lord. And we're, we're only trying to get your word out. So I ask that you will put it into people's hearts and minds to go over to uh, Odyssey and and sign up with the channel on, with with uh, sign up with them there and uh, subscribe to her channel and and um, and listen to the content that we have there, Lord. Our ministry over there. But Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. Amen. All right, that's it for me, y'all. Um, you know. I'm probably I'm, I'm gonna do something tomorrow. Okay, I I I, 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 I yeah I might go live tomorrow. 
it's Christmas Day. Uh, I'm going to put this one out. I might go live tomorrow because I want to talk about the end times. I want to talk about, I really want to get into, I really want to get into, um, yo, it's crazy because I, I, I'm going to just give you a little sample. I want to get into how it's going to be um, like, like the Antichrist and uh, in the tribulation time, the Antichrist will have his people and, and like the police. We're going to talk about the police and what their role will be in the end times. This is something that just came to me today. And I want to talk about the role of the police in the end times and how what we see happening now is setting them up for their role. Whoa, it's setting them up for their role in the end times. I'm going to go over that. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I might do that live, but if I do it live, I don't know what time it'll be. If not, I'll have it up for you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow night, most likely. Anyway, thank you. Maybe me and Aaron will do it on Odyssey. If you guys will come over to Odyssey, we can do it there. I know she'd love to do a show like that. She's all about that stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I love y'all, man. I really do. I truly love you guys, and I thank you guys for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe this to uh, to my channel. Like and share this content if you do. Leave a comment and um, hit me up, vemusic1 at gmail.com. And check out my music, officialninjascroll.webs.com. That's official ninja scroll.webs.com. Go check out my music, please. And buy a CD or two or get a, a download. Help support the ministry that way. I got also have uh, T-shirts, hoodies, sneakers. I got all kind of uh, merchandise over there. Just go check out the website. You're not going to see a lot of merchandise on there, but you can just tell me what you want, and I can order, order a hoodie for you or, or sneakers or, or um, cups, you know, bags, book bags, stuff like that. Oh, and, and like I said, she, I got t-shirts and stuff like that too. So if you want to um, go to my website, check out the merchandise, buy a CD, or get a digital download for only five bucks. Just hit me up, y'all, and, you know, help support the ministry. I appreciate it. I really do. But um, thank you guys once again for listening. I'm Ninja Scroll. This is the I Am Awake show on I Am Awake Radio. Peace. God bless y'all. I'm out. To get through prophecy Ain't no stopping me You bringing out the best in me You and I together It's a real good recipe And you can see the whole world Is changing rapidly Teach the word of God together All for his glory True love story Me and you we live our lives for Christ Believe in him because he was the perfect sacrifice You don't think twice about it You always
always on your grind You quit to tell me that you love me and I'm on your mind And I'm so thankful that the Lord has sent you past my way I never win, we talk all day and in the end we finally pray And so my brain you stay without you, there is emptiness The day I met you is the day that I will not forget We see eye to eye, real love, we keep each other in check Sharp like ninja swords, apocalypse so much respect I know I'm tired of being alone This is I Am Awake Radio.